Our students, Brian Proctor, back again with another installment of Let's Make a Comic Book Together. I almost called it Let's Draw a Comic Book Together, part 11. And this one is going to be on timing, pacing or timing, which are the same thing. So we took a break from drawing the uh, anatomy and we're going to get into some uh, more of the meaty stuff. So this is what we're going to do today. All right. So you have your story ready. It's complete. Everything's written out. You have your characters all fleshed out, got them all ready. You have all your background set up in place so you can put your character there. So you have all that, we're ready to draw. So you have to ask yourself these questions first. How many books will it take to complete that story? Is it gonna take one book, which probably not, uh, two books, 10 books, you have to figure that out. And then how many pages per book will it take to complete your story? Now, most, uh, printing shops, they'll do a certain number of books, and it has a certain number of pages, and it has to be even pages. I think it's 12, maybe 12, 18, 24, something like that. I'll get back with you later on that one from for the, for the number of the printing place that I use because it has to be an even number. So if you have an odd number of pages, you can just throw like a pin up in there or just a white blank page in there or just some thank you page in there but it's always good to put pinups in your book number one it, it get it adds to the pages page count makes your book a little bigger than everybody else's and then you know a little something about the character because you can do a little character pinup with a bio or something or a design of his weapon or, or the hideout something like that you know and then later on you might just do a whole book like that just a, a sketchbook of your character designs and so forth but that's that's way down the road so let's go to the drawing table and let's get into more uh, pacing or timing. So before I go, what is what is that? What did you say? What is pacing? What is timing? And I'll, I'll repeat this again when we get to the table. It's your character is here and your character has to get here. How long does it take for your character to get here? That's basically timing or pacing. All right, so let's go to the drawing table. All right, let's get into pacing or timing, which are both the same. So regardless of which word I use, it's both the same. So pacing means how fast you have your story going. So example, let's see if I can draw this quick room, a, a kind of a room. Here is a room. Okay, and here is the door. You have one door here. Well, actually, it's going to be like that. Get your perspective right, brother. It's going to be like that. You have one door here, one door there. These should be even doors, but they're not. So, and here's your character right here. Here's your character. Let me get a brush. Here's your character. He just came into this door. Get your perspective right, Brian. He just came into this door, and he's got to go through the other door. Now, you have to do this in panels. Now, how long is it going to take this guy to get across this room to go out this exit right here? What? Man, stop doing that because you're messing up. So, yeah, how long is it going to take for this guy to go through that door? How many panels is it going to take? So, you got that so far. Let's add some shading. This is a dark room over here. I'm just wasting ink. I'm not wasting ink. This is for the students. So he came through this area here. And he's got to go across this room there. Now let's do this. Let's just say, let's just say there is a picture on the wall. There's a picture of somebody, the owner, the owner of the building, owner of something, and his little wife behind him. That's a picture, and his little son right there. There's a picture here. There is a table here. Let me see a piece of that leg, and let's say it has something, a vase on top of this, a bucket. There's a bucket. It looks like a bucket there. And let's say it's a dead something. 
It's a dead mouse. Let me put a little dead mouse over here. Dead rat. Over here. He's laying down. He's a dead rat. Let's pencil the dead rat so you can see him a little better. Alright, so now these things are in the room. This is why I use one piece of paper at a time. All these three things are in the room. So he has to get from this room to that room. So now, push this up. You have to do panels. You have to do panels. Let's say this is going to turn it this way. This is your 11 by 17 page here, right here. That is your 11 by 17 page. So you could either do this. You could say, let's do this. You could split it down the middle. And you can have the guy the door like this. I'm using a pencil. I use this pen because a pencil is smooth. A lot of people ask me that. A, a pencil is kind of like it's kind of like walking on a greasy floor, or something, and you slide a little bit. Whereas this is like walking on a, a basketball court with tennis shoes on. It grips. It doesn't. So I can I can slide it around without it kind of sliding off off balance, shall we say. This is why I use red pencils. Because a lot of times I'll just do quick sketches like that and I don't want my pencil to go all over the place. So this is the guy. He came in here and he might say something. You know, oh, what a large room. You know, and then so your next panel is right here. So is the exit point. So he's right here and He's, he's walking out. His arms are here. His foot is there. This is his nose. He's leaving. So, you, you broke that down. Your timing, that's quick. That's quick timing or quick pace that you just did. So, he said something else. You know, whatever. Oh, I saw a dead rat. Or was that a dead rat? That's timing. So, you, it took you two panels to get him from here to here. Now, if you say to yourself, well, I need to stretch that out. I need to make more panels. It went too fast. This, this pace went just too fast for me because he needs to say something else. I mean, you could have him say this, more here, more here, and then this, more here, more there. But would it make sense? So let's do a different pace on that. So we have this. Your 11 by 17. And this is what I always do when I do my rough sketches or my thumbnails. Uh, I don't know why I can't just use the whole page, but I'll do the lines. So, we're back to this again. Back to this. Now, I can say, I need, he has a lot to say. So, I can say, I need at least six panels. Two, four, six. Let's say six panels. Now, I'm going to make them all even because everything that goes on is not, won't be as important. One won't be more important than the other. If that was the case, this might have been a bigger panel. This could have been the biggest panel because this could be the important part. The important part is he walks through the room and he sees something that shocks him. That, that could be the, the, the most important part or it could be down here or here or wherever. So, but I want this just to, to be a slower timing. So, I do this. He comes to the door. And then the next one could be him passing the picture on the wall. He could be looking as he, as he passes. And the best way to do that is put a little spine there. You can kind of turn him a little bit. He's walking. And his, 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 his head is turned. He's looking at the picture as he walks by. Where is my other pin? He's looking at the owner. He's the owner again. He owns the building. He owns everything. He's just like a trillionaire. And his little son and his wife right there. So the next one could be just 
him walking. Next one could be he sees the table, so he's like this. Here's the here's the bucket. And this is him way back here. He's still walking, mind you, so put that spot in there, put that this here and this here. The legs are wrong, but he's still he could be looking at the bucket and maybe thinking of something. Oh, somebody left a nasty bucket of water over there. And then the next part is, he could be, let's do this. No, because if he would have to turn. He saw the dead rat. Now we're looking down at the dead rat, so however a dead rat looks. Now let's change this. It's more like this. Instead of looking that way, he looked back this way as he went by the dead rat. And I'll ink this in a second. And then finally, the last one is, however, I put the door, put the door up. Since I had it down this way, I put it up this way. He's just leaving the room. Since it's up, his shoulder has to be like that too. The head forward, forward motion, like that. So let's ink this real quick. He came through the room, he's walking. Now this could be a good one for the dead rat. The dead rat could be right here, but I did. I just wanted a walk because I needed to. I needed to space this out a little bit. So here we go again. And when you walk, try not to bend the knee because when you bend the knee, that that shows that you're walking a little faster. But he's not walking fast, so the leg should be straight. Should have been straight. So this arm will be back. This arm will be forward. He sees the bucket. He just glances at the bucket. Maybe his job was cleaning up, washing windows or something, and that brought back memories. And that's what he could have said. Oh, it brings back memories. Then there's the dead rat. And you'd be like, oh, that's that's nasty. And then finally, he leaves. your panels and then you have your pacing I think this, this one is just dead no this should be good your gutters not your panels yeah your panels and your gutters like so so there you have A paced out wrong pin story. Now, depending on how 
number one, how fast you need something to move or how slow you need it to move or how many pages you need or don't need that determines how fast you are going to or how many panels you're going to need to move something quickly or slowly. Now, I threw the things in the room. I'm just showing you this, you know, from, from two panels to six panels from one panel. You know, you get your one panel, turn it into two panels, and to turn it into six panels. Now, I could have turned this into 58 panels if I needed to be, but that, was <clears throat> that would have been too long unless the story called for it. Now, let me focus this camera again, and I always do this in every one of my videos because around about the 12-minute mark, it starts to blur, and you'll see the difference between this, this. It's a lot crisper, a lot clearer. I have to buy me another camera phone. I said that I'm going to do that. So, where was I? Now, the reason I put the elements in this room is because you need that to give your long pacing a purpose. Now, the only thing about this would be he'd have to, let's just say, he could say he saw the owner and he said, hey, that guy looks like my dad, you know, and that looks like my mom. And they said, what a coincidence right here. You know, this is just him thinking and stepping. And then he could have seen the bucket and say remembered his old job or something and then saw the dead rat and was like wow somebody needs to clean up there's a bucket of water over there already and then he's like well i'm glad to leave this nasty room but you have to have these little elements in the story to help pace now right here i didn't really have to show him i could have just showed a close-up of the bucket and him thinking about something but just showing him there shows um the distance he could have covered and something else I could have I could have done I could have put the, the picture like right here it shows that he was right here then he took a couple steps another step then he's a little further from it and then the next one is like the rat and the next one is the door because the rat is kind of closest to the door compared to the table which is a bit like right there but these little things you have to think about when pacing a story because it's really good when you can get it right without so we say wasting time, but you don't want to have a lot of, of panels because the more panels you have, the smaller your drawings will be, unless you're drawing just a close-up of a face, of an eye, of a nose, or whatever, and that kind of gets that kind of gets um, I don't want to say repetitive or redundant. But let me show you a couple pages that I did with pacing. Now, this one was like a three-panel page. This is from the Samurai Clown. I don't know if this book is out yet or or it's it's, I know if this is the la la latest book, it's done. I had to get it reprinted because I had it printed, but the people that printed it, they don't sell, they don't buy it. It's not like print on demand. So they print it and I have to buy it and sell it myself, go to a con or whatever. So I had this guy in the woods. He's like a, um, a wood tree chopper. I don't forget what that's called. So the next one, I just drew a closer one. The third one, I just drew a closer one because something was coming up on the guy and he just wanted to see close. Now I could have done another one where you actually see the guy's face, but it was not meant to see the guy's face. So this is just like timing. It's just a little bit of, of timing. And uh, another one, I have a couple couple to show you that I did. Like this is uh, Eye of the Beholder. This is the next book that I'm working on. Yes, I, I'm doing like three comic books right now, plus YouTube, plus a you to me thing. I'm, I'll tell you about that later. So this guy, he's running and he's shooting. So obviously he's not hitting something now. Well, let me keep going. So he did a little jump. He's running, shooting. He jumped. He's still shooting. He landed, getting up. He's still shooting, and he's running again. So obviously, he didn't hit whatever he was shooting at. So he's desperate to hit this thing because he's running and shooting. Now, I could have had from this one to him hitting whatever he was hitting, but I wanted to show that it was desperation, one, and that's why I had so many panels with this guy running and shooting. And I believe the next next page is he still running and shooting but I think I showed the object that he was shooting at so it's pacing so and this one more page from that so this is a jump this was a hard page for me to design right here this was really really difficult for me to to come up with so basically it starts down here he jumps the guy jumps because you see the jump line the trail line and then he's falling it was nothing for him to land on so he's falling so what I wanted here was that transition from this jump to flipping back 
and falling. So that's another, hey, what are you doing here? That's another um, part of pacing your story as well. But I didn't want to take this through like seven or eight different pages. I wanted this to just be all kind of like one smooth piece and ended up like this. So if you have your story done, my camera just froze for a second and I'm waiting for it to, to re unfreeze. If you have your story done, what was I going to say? Cause my camera froze and I forgot exactly what I was going to say. If you have your story done, you have to figure out how many pages it's going to be. So as I said in the beginning, uh, most comic books are like 12 pages, which is actually going to be 24 pages for you because you take these two, two drawings, Take these two drawings, put them together, and that is one page. Even though there's two drawings, that's one page. So you have to think about that. So if your book is 12 pages long, that's 24 pages of art that you have to do. So if it's, um, uh, what is it, the next one, like 24, that's 48 pages of art you have to do. So that's a lot of drawing, 48 pages. And if you, you have your book out, you know, bi-weekly, or, or monthly, there's still a lot of drawings, especially if you have school or job or family or uh, sickness or vacation coming up or whatever that you have to put a certain amount of time in before you can get back to this. Unless you're just a pure artist living off of this and you can just draw, you know, eight, ten hours a day, then you're going to have to think about how much drawing you're going to do. All right, so recapping. Pacing and timing is just how much time it takes for your character to do something. Whether it's walk across a room, uh, pull out a gun from his holster and shoot somebody, or power up. It's like um, the oh, um, Dragon Ball. The one thing, I, I, when I first discovered Dragon Ball, I loved it, but then as a writer, as a writer myself, when he stopped to power up, uh, it's a big fight, it's a big fight, big fight, all hell's breaking loose, and then he stops, he's got to power up. It may take him like three shows to fully power up. And just that, that was too much for me because as a writer, I'm like, kill him now. Don't stop him. You know, don't wait. Go ahead and kill the guy. Or usually in the middle of a fight, there's the, the, the backstory. Oh, when I was young uh, on planet whatever, uh, the, 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 the lightning hit me and I had these powers and everybody hated me because I had, that's too much backstory. You know, it's just like, come on, let's get with the fight. Don't do that in the middle of a fight. But that is perfect, um, that is perfect, I don't want to say plot line or outlining, so you will come back or you will stay. Because if you're in the middle of a big fight and then you go to a commercial, you're, gonna, you're not going to walk away. You're going to make sure you're right there after that commercial comes back because they're in the middle of a fight. And that's the same thing they do. There's a big giant fight and then suddenly there is, uh, you know, the, the, the dialogue and the backstory and the history and so forth. So you're going to stay to see that just because they might get back to the fight at any time. So that's it's like brilliant writing. But for me, I guess I'm impatient. It's like, come on, get 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 with the story. Let's 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 see the fight. Let's see the fight. And it, it happens in regular movies too, where the two guys, like could be the two soldiers or best friends and they're shooting and, and the bombs are blowing up and everything's going off. And then the best friend is hit. So the other guy runs to the best friend and he holds him up. He's like, oh Joe, don't die on me, don't die on me. And then suddenly while he's giving that long speech, oh, take, take care of my family and, and feed my dog and make payments on my new Mustang, you know. So everything has kind of stopped. You notice in the background, if you listen, there's nobody shooting anymore. There's no bombs going off. You know, it's just not, it's not, it's not a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not a, a, a harsh environment anymore, even though, you know, a second ago, everybody was getting killed and blowing up. Suddenly, because he's doing the dialogue, it's, it's nice and friendly. You hear the music, and, you know, then the guy, he puts his friend down, he pulls his guns out, and he goes out and shoots everybody, and kills everybody, and nobody can hit him. That, you know, to me, as, as I say, as a writer, and as I grow old and, and, and wrote so many stories, to me, that just, you know, come on, you got to do better than that. So, I think that's going to be it for timing. And pacing. I mean, because it's it's a it's a simple thing. You just learn, have to learn how to do it, why to do it, and yeah. So that's going to be it for this short video. And uh, yeah, I have no idea what the next one is. I'm not going to go back to anatomy, but I'm probably going to stick with 
actually doing because a lot of people have their anatomy down. It's like you have to get your story. As I said, you have to get your story right. Now, if you can't really, if you don't really have the ending, that's cool. But if you have like, you know, three quarters of it, then you can start drawing, you know, especially your background. You got to get your background. I think I might do one on backgrounds next because that's an important part, which is why I did this room and I was not going to put all this stuff in here. But as I was doing it, it hit me that I had to put it in there. So when you're doing backgrounds, there are certain things that you have to do because it just helps the story to flow. So it would have been just, if he just walked through an empty room, he could have been thinking to himself, but that would have been boring. So you have to have these little background elements to help your story flow. So that's enough of this great information. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for joining me and subscribing and give me some thumbs up so that the um, uh, YouTube will know that, hey, this is a good video. Let's put this video in front of everything else. So they go by that, how many likes you get. So yeah, see you guys later. No rambling. See you guys. Wait, throw the, throw the pin out. I'm done. I think that was for this video, particular video. Anyway, all right, later.